Hey guys, here's a quick video on the relationship between the current account and the capital and financial accounts. Um, what's important here is to understand what happens on one side of the balance of payments um, and how that has an effect on the other side of the balance of payments. What I want you to think about in this particular uh, key knowledge point is try not to trace individual transactions, as in, well, when we have one transaction on this side, how does that affect the one, that exact, you know, same transaction on that side? It doesn't work like that, yeah, it, it breaks down. What I want you to remember is try and think of this as at the end of all of the transactions involving money or assets coming into or out of the country, why when the current account goes this way, does the capital and financial account go this way? Okay, so I want you to think of it at the end of all the transactions over a given period, why do we see this relationship? Because you'll, uh, you'll fry your noodle trying to do it with individual transactions and it just doesn't make sense, it doesn't work. All right, so let's just recap on some key ideas here. So what is the balance of payments again? Well, this is the, the area in which um, uh, is recorded all flows of money and assets in and out of Australia. Okay, so we're only talking international transactions here. That's really, really important. And then the second part of this is the uh, idea of credits and debits. It's critical to understanding this outcome, guys. So credits being money flowing into the country and debits money flowing out of the country, money or assets. Okay, so when it's flowing into the country, it's a credit. When it's flowing out, it's a debit. And the little easy way to remember it is you all have debit cards. And so when you use your debit card, money flows out of your account. Okay, so that's a nice easy way to remember the, the transaction directions. Okay, now moving on to the current account. This is obviously the part of the balance of payments which records all financial flows uh, in and out of Australia with no future financial obligation beyond the initial transaction. Okay, so this is how we split up where the transactions go, remember, between the current account and the capital and financial account. And then we move on to the other side of the balance of payments, which is the capital and financial account. Now, these are transactions which do have a future financial obligation, which essentially means um, after that transaction happens, uh, there's gonna be one party in either country that is either going to be owed something or is um, uh, going to be owing someone. Okay, now let's get into the relationship here. Okay, um, so what I've got here is just a visual representation of the balance of payments. Um, Australia, generally speaking, will have what we call a current account deficit. Now, if we look at what's going on here, you've got um, the little balance kind of in the middle, uh, the fulcrum for those playing at home for the fancy words. Um, and you'll see here that uh, we're gonna dip below the zero line. Yeah, whoops, this way. We're gonna dip below the zero line on either the capital and financial account or the current account when there is more debits than credits, when there is more leaving Australia than there is coming in, okay? And that's generally what we have in Australia is we have a persistent current account deficit where we have usually more future financial, um, sorry, where we have more transactions with no future financial obligation, there's more money leaving the country than there is coming in. All right, and that's kind of the situation that we have now. Um, balanced would be if the amount of money leaving um, and entering the country on either side is the same, or surplus would be there's more money coming into the country than leaving, which is the case on the capital and financial account. And we're going to explain through this video, um, hopefully, why that is the case. And really, what I like to kind of think about it is, well, money in Australia isn't unlimited, okay? We've got a limited amount of money um, flowing around um, uh, our economy, okay? And to kind of demonstrate that, um, we will go here. All right, not limited. So. There's gonna be some uh, transactions in Australia which we sell overseas and we count, we call them exports. These are all counted as credits of money coming into the economy. So coal, um, education and tourism are some of our really big export categories. And let's just say over a given period of time, we sell these to overseas customers and as a country, we get $800,000 for them, okay? But we also are, are an importing country, so we also import goods and services. So we're gonna import electronics, we're gonna import oil, and we're gonna import cars. 
And let's just say in this scenario here that we are importing one million dollars worth of imports. And straight away, because money in Australia isn't unlimited, you see we've got a problem here. All right, so of the stuff that we sell overseas, we are going to get $800,000 for that. Sweet, I'm holding at $800,000 here. But then as a country, we've gone and bought $1 million worth of imports. Hmm. So I can pay for 800,000 of them, but we've got a problem, don't we? We're $200,000 short. There's more money leaving the country from our imports than there is money coming into the country from our exports. And that phrase, more money leaving than coming in, should give you a little bit of a hint as to why um, we have a current account deficit. Because generally speaking, the money we get from our exports is smaller than what we pay for our imports. Hmm. So I'm $200,000 short as an economy. What could I do about that? All right, well, as an option, um, we're going to see how we've got our chart here, which leads into um, the relationship. So I'm actually just going to exit out of the presentation to show what's going to happen here. So with our little lever thing that we've got going on here, if we have imported um, $1 million worth of stuff and only exported $800,000 worth of stuff on the current account, what's going to happen to the current account here? I want you to make a quick prediction. Yeah, if we're importing more than we're exporting, what's going to happen to the current account? And if you'd said our current account is going to go further into deficit like this, then you would be correct. But hang on a minute. Why, if that's the case, has the capital and financial account gone up further into surplus? And the answer is, guys, well, when we import um, that million dollars worth of stuff and we export that $800,000 worth of stuff, the current account has fallen by $200,000 because that's the difference between the money coming in and the money leaving the country. But we can't just make up that money. We've got to borrow it. And when we borrow money from overseas um, banking um, institutions, from overseas people, well, that is money coming into the country that has a future financial obligation. So when this side goes down by $200,000 because we're 200 short, this goes up because we've received money from overseas banks. We might have also sold some Australian assets, which has resulted in money coming in. And as a result, we've now got money that has come into the country, more money that's come into the country, which has a future financial obligation. And if, let's say, we, we just borrowed this money from a bank, well, that future financial obligation would be the interest repayments that we need to pay that particular financial institution. It also works the other way. So if we were to um, have the current account position here as a starting point, all right, and then we get more credits than debits and we go this way, well, that means there's more money coming into the country than leaving on the current account, which is awesome. We've now got all this extra cash because we've, we've received, let's do some other dummy numbers, we've received one and a half million dollars from our exports, but we're only spending one million dollars on our imports. Cool, I've now got an extra half a million bucks. So as a country, are we just gonna stuff that in our mattress and just you know hang on to it? Well, no, we're gonna, we're gonna lend it and invest it. And when we lend that to other countries who will pay us interest in the future, when that money leaves the country, when we've lent it, well, that's money that's leaving the country with a future financial obligation. And then so that goes in the capital and financial account. So hopefully through this, guys, you've seen the relationship between the two. To best understand it, I like to start over here on the current account. And if we have extra money, if we have what's called a trade surplus, yeah, there's, we're, there's more money coming in than leaving. If we've got extra money, then you know what? We're going to lend that out over here. So money is going to leave the country here, and that's where you're going to get that negative effect. The more common relationship we have, though, is where we have this kind of starting position, and then as a result, we um, have more money leaving the country than entering on the current account. So therefore, the current account is going to go further into deficit. And how do we finance that gap that we have between money coming in and money leaving? Well, we borrow it over here, okay? And it gets recorded over here. It gets a little tricky because it's still money coming in on this side. Yeah, money coming in and that's why it goes 
towards surplus. So hopefully this helps guys. Um, feel free to watch the video again. It's a really tricky concept, but once you kind of get that understanding of well, when this changes, this has to change, and then you also contextualize it with, just think about it as all transactions, yeah? When you add up all of the current account balance and all of the capital and financial, in the end, they will balance. All right, thanks guys. Hope this was helpful.